All right, Pete in North Las Vegas. Um, gonna do a little bit of a recap on yesterday's uh, range testing on my new uh, Frontier Armory AR or LR-308. It is not an AR-10, as a lot of people like to interchangeably call them. It's a DPMS pattern, so that makes it an AR-308 or an LR-308. Anyway, I always mention that. Um, I had some issues with these particular magazines. These are D&H magazines, and you can see right here how the, the back end of that, that round is, is tilted down. And I've never had a magazine tilt down in the back before, so this is a first. Um, all my AR-15s, if I'm going to get any tilt, it's usually at the front end, and, and the bullet will dip down low. Still causes feeding issues, but this is kind of oddball. Now, I have this set right here, and I'm, I'm going to tap it, and you'll see that even after tapping it a little bit, it doesn't always come all the way up into the feed lip area. Still see a little bit of a gap back there, and I gave it a pretty good tap. And what's happening is as the bolt lugs come by, it's just not picking the round up. And where it's at right now, it would probably be feed, but what I noticed was uh, it would sit down more, more along those lines. And like I was saying in yesterday's video, you would think with all the recoil shock and all the vibration during rifle operation that it wouldn't stay there. And it seems to mostly happen on about the last three, four, maybe five rounds. If, if the magazine's fully loaded, there seems to be enough spring tension to where that goes all the way up. Okay, now I wrapped on it pretty hard and you can still see a gap right there. So I'll tap it again. And now you can see it's fully engaged with the feed lip. So anyway, uh, I took this one apart last night and the idea was to see if uh, a Magpul follower, uh, if I could substitute a Magpul follower inside this magazine. And uh, I'll show you what this follower looks like here in just a second. And uh, you'll see why this, this follower tilts the way it does. Okay, so you can see on the Magpul design, that it has this big uh, anti-tilt area. And um, the back ends look about the same, but this is what's preventing most of the tilt on the Magpul design. And you can see that this virtually has little or no um, anti-tilt to it at all. And um, like I said, I've never seen a magazine where it tilts in the back more than it does in the front. So that's kind of odd to me, but um, you can see the difference in spring length. And part of the reason for the spring length difference is the uh, Magpul, if I get them lined up, the Magpul's a little bit longer The box. Let me stand them up without the base plates. Okay, so you can see standing them up end to end. So that's why Magpul used a slightly longer uh, spring. So I tried swapping this into the DNH magazine, and it's it won't fit. So. Unless somebody else aftermarket offers something to replace this on the DNH that has more anti tilt features, these magazines are not going to work in my rifle. Okay, so yesterday during range testing, I had the rifle speed uh, adjustable gas block opened up all the way. So I was feeding this thing full gas. And um, I was running this stuff yesterday. The 130 grain 308 Winchester, and I was running some old uh, South African uh, NATO surplus, and the Federal stuff ran great, um, cycled perfectly, held open on the last round, no issues. Um, the South African ball ammunition, it would cycle okay, but it wouldn't always hold open on the last round, so it was just ever so slightly underpowered. Um, 
for this rifle. And this is an Aero Precision uh, buffer. It's 3.8 ounces. And off the shelf, that's about as light as you go for a 308. Is 3.8. Uh, most of the manufacturers, that's that seems to be what they're supplying. So if you need something lower, you're going to have to go uh, aftermarket. So in order to run this uh, NATO surplus reliably, um, I decided that the best option was rather than mess around with different spring springs, that I would just go with an adjustable uh, buffer. And I'm going to try this out from uh, Odin Works. And he gives you different size weights. And he's got a chart on the back. It looks like you can get the weights down to about three. 3.4, 3.5, so I'm going to knock about half an ounce off on the uh, the buffer weight and see if that'll run the uh, surplus a little more reliably. And part of the reason I would really like to run the surplus in this rifle is I got a crap load of it. I built two FN fouls back in uh, 2003, and at the time I bought a bunch of uh, a bunch of NATO, and it's been bought and paid for for a long time. And that's another thing with the new stuff on the shelf. Um, I had a, uh, somebody comment not too long ago saying, yeah, 308's kind of getting up there, even your run-of-the-mill stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I knew it was more expensive, but I didn't quite realize uh, by how much. So anyway, I'm going to try some different, uh, different stuff next time out once we get this buffer swapped around. And in yesterday's video, I was talking about the Winchester NATO. Is this really loaded to, to M80 specs? I don't know. It's how the box is labeled. And so we'll try some of that too. We'll try some of the new commercial NATO and my old actual for real NATO. So anyway, just kind of a short video today explaining what I'm going to try to do to, to get this thing to run on the, uh, the lower power NATO stuff. So the next video will be uh, some more range testing on this rifle, seeing if I can get it dialed in. Pete, North Las Vegas, over and out. Okay, bonus clip again. Always forget to explain something. Uh, for those of you that may not be familiar on how an adjustable uh, carbine AR-10 buffer works, uh, you can see where my Allen wrench is. That's a set screw, and that locks the uh, main... Allen into place, socket screw. Um, they give you aluminum, steel, and tungsten to adjust the weight on this. And I'm not sure what's already inside it. Doesn't sound like anything's in there, but there's also rubber insulators that go in between some of them. Anyway, the, it's, it's very easy to do and the, it comes with a set of instructions. So anyway, we're gonna get this down to about 3.4 ounces or maybe even if I can get it lower, I'm okay with that because I can adjust the gas down if I need to. Okay, so that's what's inside it. A couple of rubber pads, different size weights. All right, Pete North Las Vegas, over and out for real this time.